GSP is back in the UFC and Conor McGregor will probably fight this year. This and more in this week's weekly MMA news wrap up. Hello and welcome to Bloodsport of MMA. Salam alaikum to everyone. So Dana White was asked several different questions about Conor McGregor and this is what he had to say. He said, yeah, he's not back in the USADA testing pool. And then he continued with uh, to another question, 100% there's a chance that Conor McGregor fights this year, which is kind of interesting. He said, yeah, we'll see how the whole thing plays out. I don't talk about shit until shit happens, you know what I mean, um, blah, blah, blah. There were several different questions he asked. The Conor thing, who the hell knows how that's gonna play out? Who cares what USADA says? We'll see what happens when it happens. Interesting that he says, who cares what USADA says? Who cares? Who cares, brother? Who cares, brother? Who cares? USADA has a contract with the UFC. You cannot just say, I don't care what USADA says. You know what I mean? So it's kind of interesting and weird, but very interesting that he says there's a chance he can fight this year because per USADA rules, there's no chance he can fight this year. So um, this will be very interesting to find out how this whole thing plays out. I, of course, hope that he fights this year, but I just don't see a possibility how. It would be very interesting to see how Dana White plans on doing that. Then, guys, yesterday was the UFC Hall of Fame class of 2023. And we just have to do honorable mentions to the guys, to the legends who got inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Donald Cerrone got inducted as a fighter into the UFC Hall of Fame. It was beautiful, his speech, goosebumps, and a lot of tears in his eyes. Jose Aldo. What an entrance he had into the Hall of Fame, did like his walk out to walk onto the stage. It was very beautiful, the speech was beautiful. Just, yeah, what a legend he is. Jens Pulver, a very underappreciated guy in my opinion, what a legend. Beautiful story that he told and um, congratulations to him as well. Then we had Robbie Lawler versus uh, McDonald. They got inducted as the fight, the fight got inducted to the Hall of Fame. McDonald couldn't be there because he wants to stay private now, I don't know why. Um, Lawler was there, obviously he's fighting this weekend, so I uh, talked about it a little bit, that was cool. Anderson Silva was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and very weirdly he couldn't be there. I don't know what else can be more important than being inducted to the UFC Hall of Fame. Like, bro, it's once in a lifetime. But he sent his son, so his son was there for him and uh, got the award for him. Anton Nogueira brothers got the uh, Hall of Fame kind of prize for their uh, charity thing that they do for kids with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Brazil. So beautiful and uh, congratulations to all the guys of the 2023 UFC Hall of Fame class. Big news this week was Israel Adesanya met with Johnny Bones Jones. If you don't know that, they had a lot of beef in the past. They wanted to fight each other, they talked a lot of crap about each other back and forth on Twitter for years. And now they randomly out of nowhere met and squashed the beef, which is beautiful to see. And a really big moment in my opinion for MMA in terms of history, because these are two of the biggest names in MMA history uh, that had a lot of beef in the past and now squashed it. They videos together where they shadow spar a little bit and stuff, um, pretty cool. And Jones made a post about it where he said, we need more of this. Life is too short to not be able to squash beefs and get along with the homie. It was a real pleasure kicking it with middleweight champion at Stylebender, Israel Adesanya, last night. Wish my man nothing but the best moving forward. Hashtag respect. Beautiful to see something like that. Um, two legends that I really like and uh, a cool team in my opinion as well. So I hope they will meet each other again moving forward. Mark Zuckerberg, like Meta launched this new threats thing. It doesn't exist in my country yet, but in America it exists. It's kind of like Twitter, I believe, which is from Instagram. It's very new. And Flow Grappling, a uh, very famous grappling account, organization commented, the best jiu-jitsu content lives on the, the, the threats, question mark, at Zuckerberg. And Zuckerberg said, it is a personal goal to create the best place for discussions around jiu-jitsu and MMA content. For visual content, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. will still be better. So Mark Zuckerberg's goal with threats, because he's a big MMA fan, is to create kind of a, a the best place for MMA talk. So he kind of tries to replace 
um, MMA Twitter, which is kind of interesting, um, but a very, very smart decision by Suck because MMA is the future. Is, 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 is it the future? Yes. Logan Paul, even though I don't want to talk about this too much, but Logan Paul wants to fight Paddy Pimlet in the UFC for free on the Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg fight card. Yeah. Logan Paul picking on some other opponents. Tell me something new. Elon Musk. That was very nice to see. Elon Musk. Last week, I told you he trained with Lex Friedman. Now he had a training session with Lex Friedman, John Danaher, one of the greatest minds in, in, in BJJ overall, and the GOAT, GSP. So Elon Musk, GSP, Lex Friedman, and John Danaher trained together. What a amazing combination of people that is. Um, and really, 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 really cool to see that Musk is Really training now. I mean, nothing makes me happier than seeing people training Jiu-Jitsu, the best sport in the world. Then we have a very interesting matchup that is booked. Dominic Cruz versus Davison Figueiredo. It's not officially booked yet, but it's in the works. And normally when news like this comes out, that means it will be booked uh, in bantamweight. That's a bantamweight debut of Figueiredo. I mean, Davison Figueiredo was a flyweight, as you might know, flyweight champion, and now moves up to bantamweight, as he said in Brazil uh, after his last fight. And I think it's a perfect fight, honestly. I was actually um, lobbying for that fight before it even was in the work that Figueiredo should face Dominic Cruz. But beautiful fight, two not the youngest guys anymore, two legends, two high level guys, and this will be a fun scrap. Another fight news is Bam Bam Taito Iwasa, fan favorite, faces Volkov, tall, tall, tall motherfucker. Um, for UFC at UFC 293, which happens September 9th. And then the biggest news of the week, GSP, George Saint Pierre is back. All right, I'm coming back. No, no. <laughs> in the UFC, but unfortunately, or maybe luckily as well, not in the octagon itself, but he will compete at the Fight Pass Invitational number six in December. Fight Pass Invitational is a thing that happened last weekend, last Sunday, this grappling competition that they have from UFC Fight Pass, uh, where stars of MMA and of the BJJ slash grappling community compete with and against each other. And GSP will be there, which is phenomenal in my opinion. Uh, I love to see that. I love to see legends still competing because grappling is something that you can compete for a long time. And uh, just like Clover did after his retirement, GSP will now come back. And this is a big, big, big announcement. I would have not thought that this will happen, but beautiful to see. And I can't wait for December to watch GSP in action again. What was the coolest news of this week or the craziest news? What are your takes? Write down in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and that you stay healthy, eat your vegetables, eat your fruits, guys. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bloodsport out.